let's run through a little a little okay. a taster. So to make this play along a ball at home, um, it's worth just giving a fraction of context about what this is and what it is and if that's okay. Because people might be um, practice meditators or reflectors. And, and what we're pointing to with direct inquiry is different. So in, in meditation, either we're trying to get to an empty mind and have nothing, or we're trying to just get focus on one thing, like a flame or a phrase. Now, we're not doing that in inquiry. We're not interested in there being an empty mind. We're not interested in there only being one thing in the mind. Also, what we're not doing is reflecting. We're, we're, we're not trying to um, understand more about what we think or uh, analyze or critique anything going on. I mean, there, there, there might be questions involved, but we're not trying to work anything out. And actually, even when we do ask questions in inquiry, we're not looking for an answer, which is might sound odd. Well, why would you ask a question if you don't want an answer? Because there's something in the looking for the question that really moves the needle rather than the answer itself. And, and, and the simple guidelines for inquiry are, it's about exploring the very moment we're in but with no reference to any concept or anything we've learned in the past or we might think in the future. It's the, the metaphor I would say is uh, imagine an alien, a Martian has been popped into what we are right now, just come in, bonk, right? <laughs> it's inexperienced, hasn't had science lessons, hasn't had any conditioning, has a basic understanding of English, otherwise we can't talk, <laughs> but what would they experience? So the key with inquiry is to look and not reference anything that we've been taught, learnt, believe, or conceptual. And that's why it's quite unconventional. And that's why it's quite challenging because we're so good at going, oh, that must be that and labeling it and conceptualizing it. Yes. So, so they're the basic kind of <laughs> guidelines. And um, there's no right and wrong. There's no answer. It's just have a go, see what happens, and then probably rewind it and then give it a few more goes would be my my um, my guess. Right, Piers, before you bit. jump in, let me let me just add one quick mm. thing because I just think it's worth potentially adding. I just had lunch not long ago with, as you say, my baby daughter. And it was very clear to me <laughs> how present she was and cute. Um, and... What was also clear to me is that, speak of the devil, she's just come back. Um, what was also clear to me was how that wasn't true for me. Now, what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. as adults, we can't help but experience the world with this running commentary of this is, you know, labels this, you know, if you see a word, you can't help but read it, you know? So the, that's the mind has, has done all, all that which is why I think it's so, we're so unused to this, what you suggested, this idea of we're not looking for an answer. We're not looking for a concept. We're not looking for a word or anything like that. So it's almost, again, as well as being alien, it's being that baby, isn't it? It's like having the baby I, I, mind. I, yeah, that, that's absolutely. We're, we're reversing our conditioned learning that what you do is get fascinated by content. We're asking people to look what's there in experience as, apart from the content. But we're so fascinated by content, whether that's a word or, or a symbol or a perception, that's where we go. Whereas the baby mind, I mean, they, they, they're doing inquiry anyway, right? I mean, they, they, <laughs> they are so direct because they haven't got anything conceptually learned yet. I mean, it's starting to happen. So that's what we're doing. And that's why it's unconventional. But it, it just takes a few times to... To, to see what we're pointing to sometimes. And, and then it's like, oh yeah, I, I kind of get it. And also people sometimes are expecting a really extraordinary experience where some kind of trumpet will go off and they'll have some kind of eureka moment. That's highly unlikely in my experience, <laughs> but there's still a lot of power in the ordinary, which we might talk about afterwards. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think this that's a really important point, isn't it? The, the peaceful mundanity of it can be a little Absolutely. misleading, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Let's dive in. I'm pumped. Let's go. I'm your okay. guinea pig. So, so to start with, just because we've been having a nice chat, let, let's just sort of 
just maybe a couple of breaths or just something just to <sighs> have, have a little let go, whatever, every, just get comfy in wherever you are sitting, standing, lying, or whatever you're doing right now. And often having a couple of little <sighs> sort of helps that. Sh- shake it out. I mean, the, the, you know, that's all. Just, just get yourself comfy. Now, as we go through this, it is impossible to get this wrong or right. You're not trying to aim to have lots of thoughts, no thoughts, anything. So whatever happens goes ever happens goes so any thoughts or sensations or things that might be happening in the body or the mind right now absolutely okay don't do anything to them don't try and chase them away just let them flip through the system and to start with we'll just have a little play within awareness um, shifting attention in and out so maybe for a few seconds just focus on one thing very specifically and narrowly, and it might be your thumb, it might be your toe. If you want to keep your eyes open, it might be staring at something. And just narrow down attention onto that very one thing. Could be my voice, doesn't matter what it is. Just narrow it right down and put your attention on that. And then when you've done that for a few seconds, why didn't it back out? And just notice what else there is available in perception in the moment to you. So widen it out from that one thing. See the rest of the room if it was eyes open. All the all the sounds that are there. Maybe you might be noticing sounds outside rather than my voice. Maybe other things you're aware of in sensation. Your clothes, the chair, um, other things that you can be aware of. Just widen it out. Go as wide as you can. And then just reverse that. Go narrow again. And you don't need to be focusing on the same things each time. It really doesn't matter. It's just to move narrow and wide within awareness, just to get used to it. Now, as you're doing this, it's it's highly likely there's going to be a series of perceptions and thoughts and sensations that are just appearing. And what we want to do is inquire into what is it that's there before those perceptions, feelings, and sensations? What are we before the activity of the mind? Is there something that's there? And we're going to do this by, first of all, just removing each of these faculties that we have and inquiring as to what is still there. Now, we don't need an answer to these. We're just going to have a play. So first of all, let's do sight and image. So if you want to close your eyes down, it helps, but you don't have to. But just imagine there's no seeing or sight or image. And that's of the external world or what we call the internal world. So without sight, image, and seeing, is there still something that is you? Is there something that's there before or without sight, image, and seeing? And just notice, removing that, seeing what's still there. So there might still be images and things you see in your mind. That's okay. We're not trying to remove them. We're just saying, what is there before that other than that? Now, let's do the same with sound, hearing. Without sound, hearing. My voice can carry on. Is there something we still are? Is there something there before the activity of listening, hearing, and sound? And then if we ask the same question, we put the two together without sight, seeing, sound, hearing. What are we? What's still there before the perception of 
seeing and hearing. Something. And then we're going to go a little further. There may be thoughts appearing, emerging in the space. And without thoughts, is there something there that we still are? What are we before the activity of thinking? So thoughts may come and go, but what's there consistently before thoughts, underneath thoughts? So without the activity of seeing, hearing, thinking, is there something we still are? Something essential and fundamental. It might be hard to define it or to put words to it. That doesn't matter. Just point that attention, if you can, to what might be there to notice before the activities of thinking Hearing, seeing. And then we're going to add one more. Feeling. And whether that's feeling an emotion or just feeling temperature or feeling something on your skin. Without the activity of feeling and sensation, if we remove that, what are we? What's there? So, without seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling and sensing, Can we get the recognition, the revealing of something consistent and unchanging that we are? And we don't need to think about this or give it shape or anything. We just notice. We might get a trace, sensing of something, an essence of something that is there regardless to what is happening in thinking, seeing, hearing, feeling. Something consistent that never changes, that is us before any activity. As you remove each of those faculties of the thinking, seeing, hearing, feeling mind and can we even rest there just for a moment what do we notice as those thoughts come and go those perceptions come and go we're not interested in those we're interested in noticing what's before what are we Is there the flicker of a recognition of something more fundamental? Ordinary, easy, but there. That's not thinking, perceiving, feeling. Now, just because this might well happen on audio, I'm gonna ask you to come out for a moment just to maybe exp to share anything at all that you noticed or didn't notice <laughs> during that few minutes. Hi, everyone. Um, so, 
it's funny trying to describe it, isn't it? Because mm. as we said <laughs> before, <laughs> yes, we immediately then fall into concepts and thoughts. Mm. And how do you describe chocolate to someone who's never eaten chocolate, right? Um, but I'll give it my best crack. So that s- sense of being, that sense of subtle aliveness, mm-hmm. that sense of subtle awareness stillness i've actually i've i'm gonna stop there i think that that's it isn't it and i was thinking a thought that did pop up during it was what are what would be most people's difficulty with this (laughs) and actually that's what it is it's the mind because as soon as the mind comes up in the form of thoughts to try and describe or grab it or identify with it, it it kind of gets overlaid as you say it's it's before that isn't it and um but but i imagine that could be where someone falls into a bit of difficulty or perhaps overlooks this subtle quality of it because we're so used to that noise going on and and as the content as we've spoken about the whole time actually this is this is it's very subtle but the more you bring your awareness to this awareness, the more it enjoyable, I suppose, it becomes, the more you can recognize it. And the beautiful thing is it's always there, always yeah. there, and it never changes. That's, yeah, and it's what you said earlier about, you know, I always describe it as invisible to subtle to obvious. Yeah. And, and it is so subtle to start with that you think there's nothing there. And then the other thing the mind will do, quite understandably, given its conditioning, is going, what's the point? Yes. So yeah. what? Well, that's nice, a nice few minutes, but I can I can meditate. What, why do I need to do this? It's the relevance that I think we struggle with. Now, I'm not quite sure how much we're going to get into that today on this conversation, but the relevance for me oh, of, we are. of knowing... Oh, good. <laughs> of, of, of knowing why this is such a valuable thing to do is absolutely transformatively game-changingly large. 